Hi everybody, my name is Matthew Pose of Pose Acoustics. I'm answering questions and Richard Berg, um, who gave $19.99, so thank you very much for that, uh, says, in many videos you praise the flexibility that Trinov gives you as a system designer and calibrator, which is true. But in other videos you talk about using all-pass filters to fix various integration issues. So how do you implement an all-pass filter on processors like a Trinov that don't expose them, expose these filters to the end user? I don't. I suspect it's possible to combine PEQ style filters into a pure phase rotation with amplitude shifts canceled out, but don't feel like digging out my EE textbooks from 25 years ago. I'm not really sure how you would do that actually because they're minimum phase filters. So if you were to completely cancel out the amplitude uh, shift, you would also cancel out the phase rotation. So um, maybe there's a way to do it. You're probably, I shouldn't say you're probably, you may be right. I have no idea. I'd have to think about that, I guess, more. That isn't what I do. Um, so I don't use all-pass filters in those scenarios. Technically, the Trinov processor would automatically do it through the optimization um, because it has the ability to create that or an equivalent through an FAR. But um, what you're talking about, so RBH has an all-pass filter in their DSP. And so when we've had their subwoofers and played around with it, we've been able to do things with that. There are some like uh, QSYS and some of the other systems out there also have all-pass filters available. So there are pro DSP platforms that have all-pass filters and we have used them to solve these issues. I don't want to overstate how necessary they are. I don't use them very often and they're not all that necessary. There, but there are some complicated situations where they've come up and an all-pass all filter has been a good way to address it. I have actually talked to Trinov and Storm about adding all-pass filters. And I think there's a chance that we could see all-pass filters added to these processors in the future. But the general feedback I've gotten has been that the number of people who would properly understand how to use them is very low and that it could create problems for, for these companies from a support standpoint. So sometimes companies, and this is not unique to them, I hear this from others. I mean, one of the reasons why Marantz and Yamaha and Denon and Ankyo and Pioneer are not more flexible is not because they couldn't make them more flexible. That would, they could make it into a pro style, um, you know, multi-channel audio platform that has significant flexibility. All the stuff is there to do that. They have actually worked very, very hard to not do that because the, the, 99% of consumers would have no idea how to use that. And what would end up happening is the amount of technical support that they would have to provide would be so significant and so expensive that there would be no way for them to stay on top of that. So they've chosen to intentionally not do that. I've actually asked some of these companies about particular setup capabilities that I would like and have been told that they will not add that. And it's not because they can't or they don't see the value. It's because they don't want to deal with the support requirements that it would create. I mean, just as an example, I would really like to see a lot of these companies make it so that the channel allocations are significantly more flexible so that they work the way Trinov and Storm do. Now, um, Audio Control is actually adding that to their newest processor so that you have more flexible channel allocations. Other companies have told me they could do that. It would be very easy to do that. They've said they don't want to do that because it would be too difficult to set up their processors and they don't want to put themselves in a situation where the vast majority, it's not just end users, it's integrators too. The majority of integrators don't know how to handle this. And so they would have a hard time setting these systems up and it would create a lot of errors and then those errors lead to unhappy customers. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into a system where an integrator set up a Trinov and then I walk in and it's basically operating as like a 2.1 system or a 4.1 system or something like that. I mean, it's just, they, I, it's not that they're idiots. They're not idiots. It's that this isn't something they, they just didn't get the training. They didn't understand how it worked. It wasn't what they were used to. You know, most of these processes are a lot easier to set up. And so they had failed to do it correctly, causing the system to not work right. Um, I've also had situations where I've walked in and somebody set it up and the channels were wrong. So the left center and right was correct, but as an example, they set the side surrounds as the rear surrounds, and they set the rear surrounds as the, you know, something else, I don't know, the wides or something like that, or the side surround twos or something along those lines. They didn't really understand what they were, and so they selected the wrong speakers when they were doing it. Now, Trinov put together a training, and it was always assumed that it would be used by more capable integrators, and really wouldn't be an end user setup product. It can be, and many of you buy it to do that with it, but it wasn't intended to be. On the other hand, products like the Marantz and the Denon and the Pioneer and the Ankyo, et cetera, 
those were never really intended to be exclusively integrator products. They were always intended to be for either integrators or for end users to easily set up because they wanted a more mass market appeal and that limits what features they make available. None of those companies will ever provide all pass filters. And companies like Storm and Trunov may, but they're often reluctant to do so because of the limited use. So like I said, even if it was available, it's not like people are gonna start using them left and right. They're not all that commonly used. There's, there's some very specific reasons to use them. They're very technical reasons that most wouldn't understand. They're hard to set if you don't understand them. And they, they would probably get messed up and create more problems than good. You know, people would end up setting them and being like, oh, my response is good. And then they make some changes or they actually had measured incorrectly. And then they're like, why do I have a big dip in my response here? What's going on? This thing's broken. And then the company would have to sit there and figure out what the heck you did and why it looks like that. When reality was, it was just a misuse of the all pass filter. So I hope that helps, Richard. I mean, it, the simple answer to what you were asking me is I don't use them very often. There's other platforms that have it. They're pro audio platforms that have that capability. It's not something that's common in residential platforms. But when available, I use it um, if I need it. And like I said, it's not a very common thing. I don't need it all that often. It's mostly to fix issues with like a mismatched subwoofer or something like that. Or like, for, you know, sometimes for whatever reason, even when all the subwoofers are very similar, the integration at low frequencies isn't great and you get a little bit more extension at the lowest frequency, something like that. But it's not a very common tool. You know, out of the last 50 calibrations I did, I maybe did it twice, maybe three times. So I hope that's helpful. Thanks for watching this video. For all of you watching, please like these videos, subscribe to my channel, and keep on asking questions and making these payments. I have to buy a new camera. So all the money you guys are giving right now is going towards my camera fund. Um, my camera apparently is old. It may be broken. I don't know. Um, I've been told by a couple of folks at Sony that they actually think the camera is working, but that what's happening is I'm using it beyond its capabilities for the situation I'm in. It's basically old enough that the processor can't handle all the fancy focusing stuff that Sony has when operating at 4K30. And I need to be able to do 4K30. When I bought the camera, you know, 2K30 was sort of the norm and that was okay and it had all its features. I switched to 4K30 and didn't realize it created some problems. So now I need to upgrade. All right, thanks again, appreciate it. Keep on watching.